and our featured speaker, Dr. Killian, HISD. Actually, it's not just I who is the featured speaker. Uh, Mr. Ramos is going to join me. <laughs> um, we have a wonderful topic today. It's potentially raising taxes. So I figured that would bring out everybody, and it sure did. It's standing room only. <laughs> Mr. Ramos, you want to come up here with me? Um, Emily Boswell's here too, from the district, and uh, Ben uh, Carson's in the back. We put some stuff out on your uh, on your chairs. Um, there's some flyers that have been going out uh, in, to our, our students, and hopefully they're coming home. Maybe they're not. We probably think they're not coming home at the secondary level for some reason. Um, but we're going to keep up with it. So, um, we are we've called the tax ratification election. Um, and that's been called for uh, this November, November 8th. And we wanted to tell you a little bit of background stuff. But before I start, uh, so that I don't get fined, I need to make sure that you all understand that um, the district does not take a position pro or con when it calls either a bond election or a tax ratification election. We are, uh, we are actually legally obligated not to take a position. So all I can do is give you information. So if you ask me afterwards or in the grocery store or whatever, whether or not I'm voting for this, I'm going to tell you that I can't tell you. So uh, I cannot take a, a position because it's a thousand dollars per occurrence, and uh, I don't really want to write that check. So you don't want to write that check. No. Okay. Well, let me tell you what we're going to cover first. Um, give you a little agenda here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about where we are um, in terms of our finances and, and the state budget. We're going to give you a little background on um, what we did to get, where, how we got here, that kind of stuff. And then we're going to do what we've done in terms of changes in the district. You know, we had a lot of cuts this last year. Let me get over here so you can actually see the screen. Um, and you can still film me right. She actually moved the camera back because I'm notorious for walking back and forth. And then we'll take some questions for you if you want. Uh, real quickly, let's see. Am I the first one, too? No, I'm it. I'm that one. Because he gave he gave himself all the pretty graphs, and I have to talk about all the written words. So no, actually that is yours. Okay. So so where are we as a district? Snapshot of Hutto ISD currently. Uh, our current student population we have five thousand six hundred and fifty three students. Uh, that is an increase of over almost three hundred students over last year. So we are still growing at a pretty good rate. Uh, total employees we have about seven hundred and thirty employees in the district. Our average home taxable value within the Hutto ISD boundary, 131385 Total campuses, we have seven. Of course, you know, as you know, we closed uh, Veterans Hill. Uh, luckily, we have Temple College and TSTC leasing that facility as well. Uh, we are the fourth largest school district in Williamson County. Uh, larger districts above us are Leander, uh, Georgetown, and Round Rock. Then comes Hutto. Current growth rate, we are currently growing at 5 or 6%. Uh, that is a huge uh, drop from our uh, hyper growth, is what I call it, uh, when we were growing 20 to 25% per school year. However, looking at the numbers, even though uh, this is what we call the slowdown when the economy hit, the housing market uh, drastically slowed down. During that growth, we've been growing about 5 6% a year, but over four years during our slow growth, we've grown 1,330 students. That's still considered a fast growth district according to state standards. When we were in our hyper growth uh, four years prior to that, that was during the economic boom. Uh, that is a period where we're growing 20, 25% a year. During that four year period, we grew 1,887 students. So even though we're growing at a smaller percentage rate, because we are a larger district, student wise, as you can see, that is not much different. This shows a uh, history of uh, the Hutto ISD enrollment uh, over uh, since 95, 96, kind of where we're, we were at. This is a period where we were in our hyper growth. Uh, currently, this period right here, we are growing and projected to grow about five to six, eventually eight percent per year. Uh, so you can still see that uh, even though our percentage-wise growth is slow, we are still growing at about 300 students <coughs> per school year. Okay, so um, what, did, what did the legislature do is a big question. Well, um, you know, they couldn't decide on school finance. Um, they took the whole a regular session, and they got there all the way down to the end, and they were able to pass uh, every law you could think of, including making it labeled to noodle, 
in the state of Texas, but they couldn't actually get down to the real business of school finance. So they had a special session for uh, school finance. Um, and two plans kind of came out of that, uh, the Shapiro plan and the Eisler plan. Our senator, uh, or, I'm sorry, not our senator, the senator from uh, the Plano area, Senator Shapiro, and Representative Eisler from the Woodlands. Um, both the plans were quite different in the way they applied cuts, and um, we were actually uh, hoping for the Shapiro plan all the way. Um, that was a plan that Senator Ogden basically told us and what we, we planned all our cuts on. Um, what happened to us was we ended up having to cut about $4.5 million in, um, the, in, at the end of this past school year uh, in order just to make it balanced for this year. Now, that's a combination of a $1.4 million deficit that we already were running uh, plus the cuts that the state did to public education finance. Um, the surprise was is that in the, in, the, in the summer session, the special session, we decided to actually meld these two plans together. Instead of uh, blending them, they, they just attached them together. In one year, they applied the Shapiro cuts. The second year, they applied the Eisler cuts. Eisler cuts were not as uh, nice to us. So what we are now faced with that we weren't prepared for at the, at the end of the year was an additional $1.2 million in cuts that are coming for 12-13. Um, the Board of Trustees uh, saw something that, that we didn't have the option of doing the last time. Um, in the public meetings that we had in January and February, we had uh, folks say, well, why don't you just raise taxes or raise revenue? Well, that wasn't an option to us then because um, you can only hold, hold a tax gratification election in or around the November time frame, the general election time. So we had to just do straight cuts. We never got a chance to send that to the voters. The board wants to hear from the community as to whether or not you want to content us to continue down the cut path, which we do another $1.2 million in staffing cuts and, and facility or program cuts, or if uh, six pennies would be uh, acceptable to the, uh, the voters. Now, what the six pennies uh, are, is we, we can actually go up to um, 13 pennies to $1.17 for $100 valuation. But the board has decided on six pennies because six pennies raises exactly $1.2 million. So I'm up here telling you um, that we're going to have a tax ratification election not to build a building that you're going to be able to see, um, not to build anything else, um, not to add any programs, but basically to keep the status quo for next year. All it's going to do is allow us to operate exactly how we have been this year, um, next year. And that includes uh, being able to operate with the additional staff for um, another 5% growth, which is roughly 270 kids or so. Um, this is a new slide we added because uh, uh, we wanted to make sure you understood that not all of this is actually coming from the voters. Um, we are actually getting some kicks in terms of uh, uh, state funding. So um, each one of these pennies has a different yield to it, and uh, that's because our state funding system is equalized to some extent, especially below the dollar four amount. Above the dollar four amount, it, it doesn't equalize quite as well. So in the first uh, the first penny that we assess, we actually uh, generate three hundred forty six thousand dollars total, um, but we get a big kick from the state. They actually pay the biggest part of that bill, and that's the impact to the local taxpayer at the first cent. And as you go up, you can see the local uh, tax impact goes up because the state doesn't um, equalize the pennies anymore as they do uh, inside the regular system. Um, and again, the only reason why we chose to go to the six pennies and not all the way up to the 13 cents that we could have uh, asked for was because um, that's what we needed in order just to balance our books for next year. Wanna, this one's, is this one mine? Yeah, this one's mine. Um, this one is a little chart showing you uh, the impact to the, the voters um, and on an average uh, home in, a, in uh, the school district. Now, the average home, as uh, Mr. Ramos suggested, was 131000 in um, Hutto. Now it's a 2010 average. Uh, the average decrease in home values in 2010 was about $3,500. And then the net effect of the six cents uh, being applied would, uh, would actually end up being about $31 a year. Now, that's a little deceiving because basically that's the impact of your taxes being lowered if your values on your home are being lowered. And, um, and then the increased tax rate, the difference between the two. So we have another chart over here which actually shows the exact impact of your taxes. So let's take that $130,000, $131,000 home, 
um, that would be a six dollar fifty cent monthly increase and a seventy eight dollar annual increase. The reason why these numbers are different is because this is this is also including the, the decrease in value on over an average home in HUD of Texas district district wide. I believe is this mine again? Man, you can give me some of the good graphs. I didn't make any of the graphs. Ed Roberts made all the graphs. <laughs> so. Anyway, this is a kind of a breakdown showing you the issue of target revenue. Target revenue is a system we're, we're basically under right now. And what target revenue is, is the, the guaranteed amount basically that the state says that we're going to generate per its weighted ADA, but I'm not going to get into that. Let's just call it student for right now. Um, so we can generally assume that a, a student unit, which is not really a real student unit, is going to generate this amount of money. And you can see Hutto is right here with $5,518. And all these districts are generating more revenue. Now, there's a couple districts you don't see that are actually underneath us. That it, it can actually go quite a ways down here. Um, Taylor, I believe, would, would rank right about here. And as you go outside into some of the rural areas, they generate less money. It's a complicated system, and quite frankly, it's unfair, and that's why we filed the lawsuit. Because if you look at all these folks, this is one of the wealthiest school districts uh, in the area, Eanes ISD, and um, Eanes ISD generates six thousand two hundred dollars uh, per student. Gerald, just uh, on the other side of the road up here, um, Gerald generates sixty five hundred, and you think, oh, well, they're very wealthy. No, they're actually not. Property wise. Uh, they are wealthy. They've got a lot of land per student, but um, the students that live there are actually economically disadvantaged. So it's there are very, very, much, very big issues in the school funding system that need to be addressed that haven't been addressed in years, and that's one reason why several of us have uh, filed suit. Dripping Springs here, pretty affluent area, about six thousand dollars, but this is a um, an example of why. Uh, the system's unfair. Drooping Springs is under tremendous strain because they're growing like we were um, quite fast, and the system doesn't account for that. And so they're having to go for a tax ratification election this year, and they're going for all 13 pennies this year. Um, you, you know, Maynard, just down the road, Leander, a pretty affluent school district, um, only at 5,900, so they're not that much farther ahead of us. And then Pflugerville, lots of rooftops, 5,200, and they're under quite a bit of pressure as well. So this is kind of an idea of where everybody sits. And this uh, school district, Austin ISD, you might be familiar with, they've been having a lot of fiscal issues, but they're a Chapter 41 school. That's a wealthy school district. They actually send money back to the state. That's a Robin Hood district. So. All right, so why has a, a TRE been called? This is mine, too. Okay. He's just letting me do them all. They weren't originally mine, I'll tell you that. Um, so we're going to have to color code because we trade off who, who's this what. Um, the reason why, bottom line, is the 1.2 will raise, um, uh, I'm sorry, the six cents will raise $1.2 million. And uh, that would bring the tax rate up from $1.04 per $100 valuation to $1.10 per $100 valuation. That's the maintenance side only. On the debt service side, which is our mortgage payment, um, we're paying 50 cents this year on our debt service. And in addition, that's another issue that we're having. Um, we have now hit the wall on our debt service side. We cannot go above 50 cents. And actually, we can never go above 50 cents. So we really can't build another school building right now because we can't afford to pay the debt um, for the mortgage on that. So the, re the revenue would just keep school programs in place and staffing levels and class sizes basically at the same level as they are right now. Now, this is yours. I know that. <laughs> so what's currently happening uh, with not only our school district, but school districts statewide, is we are educating more students with less funding. Uh, that's basically what this chart shows. Uh, as you saw prior, our enrollment uh, in 07 08 started at 4350 That's about a 5 6% increase per school year, currently at 5653 So as a school district, we are still growing. We are still receiving additional students on a yearly basis. Beginning with 2009, 2010, uh, that's when you start seeing our overall total operating budget begin to decline. And that is a result of state cuts uh, that were issued beginning uh, with last year, 10 11 school years. So currently our, our current budget is $36.9 million. So what does that mean comparing 11, 12 to 07, 08? 
In 07 08, our enrollment was 4,350 students. We spent on a per student basis $6,998 per student to educate each student in our district. And again, our total budget at that time was $30,442,000. Fast forward to this current school year, our enrollment 5,653 students. Currently, we're spending $6,527 per student. So there is a difference there. It has gone down. Our total budget this year, $36.9 million. So in 11-12, if we were using 0708 dollars, uh, not counting inflation, not counting utility increases, not counting payroll increases, our budget would actually be $39.5 million. So in, in essence, we're, we're educating 1,303 additional students from 0708 with 2,000 Two million six hundred sixty-one thousand less dollars. So what we're basically saying is we're educating more students with less money compared to 07 Okay. Okay. That's your sales. So this basically gives a historical picture of where federal <coughs> ISD tax rates have uh, gone over the years. Uh, highest tax rate that we ever had in the district was back in two thousand five, dollar eighty three. The red part that you see here, that is our maintenance and operating tax rate. That covers all of our operating budgets. Uh, what you see in blue, that is our debt service tax rate, and that tax rate covers our uh, mortgage payments. Uh, so currently, uh, our tax rate for 2011 is set at $1.60. That is comprised of 50 cents on the INS side, the debt service side, our mortgage payments, and $1.10, which includes the six cents that we are asking for voters uh, to approve or disapprove. Uh, on the maintenance and operations side. So what have uh, we done over the, the history as far as budget cuts are concerned? As you know, in 2006, the state of Texas passed what they call property tax relief. And so what in essence happened is all property taxes throughout the state were reduced uh, basically to a dollar four, uh, which was a maximum that school districts could uh, charge their taxpayers by 2007. That is where most school districts were at uh, by the 2007 school year. What was supposed to happen at that time was the revenue that was lost from property taxes, the state was supposed to replace with what they call the business margins tax. Uh, we know for a fact now that that did not occur, and it's still not occurring. So basically the state is operating on a deficit budget. Uh, the revenue that they lost from property taxes, they have not been able to make up with the business markets tax. Thus, uh, that is where they were looking at a huge uh, budget deficit this past legislative session. What that meant for HUDO is we, uh, we had to implement $4.5 million in cuts for the current school year, the 2011 12 school year. And we know for a fact that in 12 13, we're going to have to cut an additional $1.2 million, or the state will cut our funding. Additional one point two million dollars. Um, just yesterday, I was at a superintendent meeting. We had some uh, finance uh, folks uh, come in and talk about where the state actually is in terms of the margin tax and all that. Um, the margins tax is only raising about a billion dollars, and that's why uh, there's been some talk of lawsuits and all that kind of stuff because there's lots of exemptions, lots of loopholes in the margins tax um, that there wasn't in the property taxes. And property taxes, just to give you an idea, they're losing approximately 4.5 to 5.5 billion dollars uh, a year. And in addition to that, they've got um, only one billion dollars of revenue coming back in. So you, you can see that it didn't work out uh, the way they thought it was going to work out, and that's why they've had to cut us. Overall, our budget uh, is composed of three three areas: our operating, uh, debt service, and food service. Our current operating budget, $36.9 million, that basically uh, is supported through our maintenance and operations tax rate, current set of $1.10. And that tax rate will support uh, teacher and, and staff salaries, supplies and materials, contracted services, equipment, student transportation, and utilities. On the debt service side, that's covered by our INS tax rate, currently set at 50 cents. Uh, our current budget, $10.7 million, and again, that helps pay for all of our construction projects and school buildings. And we also have our food service budget, $2.3 million this year. So we currently serve 5,225 meals per day in the school district. Uh, that project is federally funded. That's a self-supporting 
county department, and so that $2.3 million is actually a zero cost to our taxpayers. Okay, so what have we done? Uh, we've closed Veterans Hill. Um, that was roughly a million dollars. Um, we've also reduced staffing units by about 70. That's another 2.6, <coughs> almost 2.7. Of those, uh, that represents about a 10% reduction in our overall staff. Um, of that 10%, 25%, uh, there was a 25% reduction in our administrative staff. Um, we've cut campus budgets and department budgets about 10%, 390000 the one that's probably the most egregious is the one where we cut our uh, health care contribution for our staff members. So um, um, our staff members are operating with uh, actual salary losses here. Um, we have a state minimum. We have a plan that we have to be part of. It's called TRS Active Care. Um, the state requires us to be part of that program. They also require us to make a minimum payment every month in order to support that along with the staff member choosing whichever program they want to be part of and they make up the difference along with the state contribution. Uh, we were paying above that cap for our employees. Uh, we, we lowered it down and we ended up um, saving up almost uh, $150,000. We took some big cuts in maintenance and operations that have been cutting pretty much every year. We, we do a staffing study and a maintenance and operations study with other districts to see how we fare with them and what kind of energy management and uh, maintenance operation cost management we can do. And we, we make cuts already, so they've, they've taken quite a bit of a hit over the last couple of years. In terms of budget, um, what the cuts actually look like, 59% um, were in staff areas, the closure of Veterans Hill, 22%. Maintenance and operation budget cuts, 7%. Healthcare con contribution cut was uh, was 3%. This was 10% uh, budget cuts were 9%. Those were the largest portions of what we cut this past year. In addition to that, we did some outside-the-box thinking. Um, you all know about the school bus advertising. It's going quite well. Um, if you want to buy an ad, it's the man to see. So um, school bus charter, we started doing that this summer. Um, we actually ran buses uh, for a UT camp this summer and made quite a bit of money off of that. Trademarking is starting to show us some money now. Uh, we have extracurricular, uh, co-curricular activity fees that we've now put into place. Uh, we're actually going to be sending out um, the requirement for folks to pay this month for those. Um, we have a tuition-based pre-K pre program. That was really more about saving positions. Uh, we were able to save uh, two pre-K teacher positions and also offer a uh, paid service for uh, local folks on pre-K. We have an online store um, that's been generating some revenue for us. We've got some land for sale. We, we uh, have buildings for lease and we've also uh, given up um, several of the buildings that were one of the major buildings that was costing us about 26000 a year. The curriculum portables are now gone. So, And that's part of that whole, um, we, we cut 25% of our administrative staff. Plus we're leasing our facilities uh, at our uh, surplus now. We've got a couple other things that have generated revenue for us or save money. We had a huge program last year to try, try to cut electrical costs that generated, what was it, over $100,000? almost $200,000, and then we gave prizes out in order to be energy savers. It was a competition between schools uh, and themselves. Then we also had an attendance uh, target program last year to try to boost our attendance because we are actually paying on a per day, per student basis from the state. Um, and what's interesting is we still employ the staff members, so if the kids aren't there, we still have those costs. If they're not there, the state actually does not send us part of the money that they owe us. So, and it's between $29 and $37 a day uh, per student. depends on whether or not they're a weighted student, and I will not get into that here. So, um, but we're not alone. Uh, we've, there's been a whole bunch of TREs um, over the last uh, several years. It used to be that the school board, the locally elected school board, could decide to raise your taxes um, on an annual basis, but they could only raise it so much, and to a, a cap as well. Um, and they, if they went above a certain amount, they had a rollback election. Well, in 2006, when they fixed the finance system for us, um, they decided to put this election process in place um, to go above a dollar four up to a maximum of $1.17. Um, and it's called the tax ratification election process. So right now, there are 34 districts that have called one, and that includes Hutto, and that's for this year. There are 20 been held, and of those, 15 of the 20 have actually ratified the, the amount, so a 75% pass rate. There are 14 elections remaining, and um, there are a thousand 
you'll, you'll see lots of numbers when you ask somebody about how many school districts there are in the state. This number is not indicative of how many school districts there are in the state. This is how many school districts have tax rates. There are actually some that do not have tax rates on their local taxpayers. Those are military bases or military installations, so that's a little bit different. Um, there are 234 districts that have already reached the cap. Um, that's uh, $1.17. And there are 51 that are in between the cap, but in between the dollar four maximum and the dollar seventeen, so they've had had a TRE. And then right now, the, um, the bulk of the rest of the districts are right at the dollar four without having to go to an election. And you've got a few outliers here, 102, that are actually below a dollar four. This kind of shows you what's going on in terms of the finance system. The reason why there's this much of a spread in tax rates is more related to how unfair the system is and how some people have to raise additional revenue locally, and some get enough benefit from the state that they don't have to uh, benefit or have to have a local tax ratification election. So there have been about 396, and actually that number is higher now, right? Yes. That have proposed, and then 283 of them have actually uh, passed the rate at 71%. Um, this is one you might have heard in the news, Dripping Springs. Um, they've got some organized opposition now. They've got some blogs going on about the whole deal. And they've actually got a representative who lives in the district, and his kids go in the district, and he's at, uh, went to the last TRE meeting and told uh, the folks in the TRE meeting that the state of Texas actually raised the amount of money they gave to public schools. So um, all I have to say to him is he needs to go back to school and take some remedial math, because <laughs> he is not right. Um, that's, that's kind of a shell game. Back in the last legislative session, um, they took general revenue away. They, they pulled that money away from schools, um, about $5 billion worth, and they filled it with that federal money they said they weren't going to take. Well, they took that federal money, even though they're acting like they didn't take that federal money. They took the federal money, filled the hole. Well, when they came back um, in this session, they had to fill that hole because that federal money was gone. And that was about $5 billion, so they had to raise uh, general revenue amount back up. That's what they're calling an increase. But overall, it was cut because overall all funds just decreased. Um, what's happening in Dripping Springs is uh, they're actually having their teachers clean rooms because they've reduced the amount of custodians to a point where they have to take out the trash and all that kind of stuff. So you've got Elgin. Um, they just passed theirs. Theirs was a tax swap. What they did was they took their uh, debt service rate and their um, maintenance and operations uh, rate and, and swapped them. They lowered their debt service by an equal amount that they raised their maintenance and operations tax. There's some argument about whether or not that's legal. They did it anyway. Lots of districts have. Um, and the reason why they're doing that is you get weighted funding under the maintenance and operations tax. The state kicks in some money, so you get some extra benefit per penny. And it's, it's a net winner for taxpayers because you keep the tax rate the same, but then you turn around and generate more state revenue, so there's an increase in funding. The uh, problem with that is kind of disingenuous. When you get down to it, uh, what you can... What you can do is then start floating your uh, INS rate up without an election. So we, as a school board and administrative team, we didn't think that was a good idea. Plus, a tax swap will not work in our case. While we'll generate a little bit more money, we will still be in the hole. So it worked for Elgin now. Um, Wimbley's got one on their agenda. Actually, they just passed theirs, didn't they? Didn't they didn't Wimbley pass theirs? And theirs was a tax swap as well. Um, Marshall, which is out in East Texas, is a district roughly our size. They, they actually failed their uh, tax ratification election, um, and we're still trying to figure out why they failed it. So um, Generally, it's because there's a lack of trust in the district, uh, or they've done some uh, bad stuff with their finances and stuff. So Allen uh, just recently passed theirs as well. Um, this was an interesting one. About two weeks ago, made the made all the PIO ground. Um, they uh, had their their band, which is the largest in the state, show up on the field with brand new uniforms and they were saying they needed a uh, tax rate election to pass. So we were wondering whether or not it was going to pass. The story behind that is that their boosters paid for the uniforms, but, you know, perception. So, anyway, so here's, we've added this slide because uh, we had a uh, public meeting last week and someone asked us what, uh, what would be the potential cuts. We haven't really even thought about this because I don't really want to go back to thinking about it. I've spent an entire semester thinking about cuts, and I'm kind of done with that right now. So we'll see what happens after the November election. But some of the things that were thrown out 
you know, we have to we have to cut roughly 5.7 over the two-year period. So um, we would think we have to increase tech class sizes. We probably have to increase that extracurricular fee. Um, we probably stop uh, van travel and away games. Some of the districts have done that. We look at reducing the custodians district wide and possibly having staff clean rooms. I'm not sure. Um, summer school student uh, services would probably be um, reduced, and this is a no-brainer. We have to do a higher degrees, and then we reduce whatever folks we could by attrition as they left the school district. But I'll tell you, attrition only works to a certain point, and then you're going to have to cut because um, the people leave in the wrong places, and you can't fit them into the new job, and then you end up having to reduce anyway. We'll probably end up reducing department budgets again, um, and then. Uh, this is a district up in Keller did this. Keller ISD got their uh, TRE uh, failed, and the lieutenant governor, for some reason, who does not even live in the district, um, came out and was against the TRE and was active in the, the failure of the TRE. And uh, by the way, that's not why I'm not voting for the lieutenant governor. I just want to let you know that. I can't say that. Um, he had no business being in their TRE. And as a result, uh, they had to turn around and um, put in a uh, transportation uh, charge for their uh, folks who ride the bus. So um, we, this is not a list of we're going to do this. This is a list of ideas. Other districts have done it. We really have no idea what we would do because, you know, the first, you know, $4.5 million was a little bit easier to do than the, the next 1.2 because now we're getting into things where we're going to have to make choices about what's right and what's wrong um, and what we can do and what we can't do. So we haven't really met as an administrative team to discuss what we might do. We just started throwing stuff on the wall right now um, just to answer a question. So that's it for that part of it. Um, I do want to end on a happier note. Um, Mr. Ramos has been trying to save uh, district money, and um, you might have noticed him at 6 o'clock at the corner of 685 and 79. <laughs> he ran out of gas. <laughs> He, he figured I was going to harass him about that. So anyway, that was him causing all the trouble over there. Uh, Thank we, you. <laughs> give you some stats real quick. Uh, at the higher ed election, there is I guess there's roughly 10,600 registered voters. Uh, we had a grand total of 600 something vote. So um, your vote really counts. You need to get out to vote. It counts a lot more than the 10,000 or yeah, the 10,000 people who decided not to show up to vote. Um, we need to hear from you what you want us to do. Um, the theme for this year's uh, vote is your school, your money, your choice. Your school, your money, your choice. So you tell us what you want us to do. Um, if you tell us you don't want to raise the taxes six pennies, then we'll go back to work and we'll figure out where we're going to cut things. Um, if you're willing to uh, flip the bill for six more pennies, generate about $1.2 million, um, then we won't go through that process again and we'll be good to go for another year. The problem now in the, the finance system is we really don't know what uh, the future holds. 2013 looks like a bad year for us. We may have to come back to voters in 2012 and ask for the other pennies uh, when, when the legislature is about to meet because we may start hearing they're going to cut us again and we don't want to be in the same position we were at in the last deal where it's the springtime, we don't have any excess revenue, we can't afford to do anything but cut. So we want to ask you guys uh, what you think. So, any questions? Yes, sir. Are you going to have a public forum? Yeah, we'll have another one. Um, we had one last week, and we had a grand total of two people show up, so we presented to those two people. Uh, we ha at this point, we don't have any, uh, there's no public opposition, but there's also no public support. So there's no back either way. Exception to that. The Board of Directors of the Hutto Area Chamber of Commerce unanimously proclaim whereas the quality, strength, and stability of Hutto ISD is linked directly to the quality of life and the economic growth of Hutto, whereas Hutto is asking voters to approve a six cent tax increase on the local property tax rate, and whereas the proposed increase will allow the district to balance budget for the fiscal year and devote its attention to providing high quality education for our students. Now, therefore, the Hutto Area Chamber of Commerce does hereby encourage the registered voters of Hutto to approve the district's request for a six cent tax.
Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> and as my wife says, I stand corrected all the time. Especially at home. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll have another public meeting. It's on Tuesday of next week, 6.30 in the pack. Um, everybody's welcome. We'll do the PowerPoint again, and we'll stand and deliver questions for as long as people want to ask those questions. So we appreciate it. Please, uh, we're doing the same communication plan we did last time, Facebook, Notes Home, all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll do the callers again um, through the phone system that we have. If you've got somebody um, that's a regular voter and they need to know the information to make an informed vote, please have them come. Because we're we're not trying to hide anything. It's really It really is your school and your money, so you tell us which way we're going to go. Uh, if I have to go back to the drawing board and cut folks, I will. Um, we did it last time. Um, it'll be a little bit harder this time. Or if you want us to raise taxes, hey, I'm a taxpayer too. You know, $78 is, I think it's $78 for me. Uh, it's going to be a, a little bit, so I won't eat out as much. Anyway, thank you very much. Any other questions? No? Well, we'll stand up here if you want to ask us anything. Thank you.